welcome to another whiskey review. My name is Matt and today I am going to be taking you through a very well known brand who created an experimental series and this is the first of the experimental series. Now what I'm going to be taking you through today is of course the Glenfiddich IPA experimental series. The first in a series of four they released, the second being the Project 20, uh, the third being the Fire and Cane, and I believe the other one being the Winter Experimental. Very nice drop this is. Obviously Glenfiddich, it's a, uh, it's a Speyside distillery. It is, well the way it's been created, it's 43%. And the way it's been created is they've taken a Glenfiddich blend and they've matched themselves up with a local craft beer brewer. Now that craft beer brewer, or brewery, sorry, has a lot of Indian pale ale casks laying around. Obviously they've soaked in the taste of the pale ale, they've soaked in the hoppiness, the dark earthy taste, and for three months they finished the IPA Glenfiddich in these casks uh, to take on that beery, hoppy, deep taste. And in my eyes, it did work. Um, I've had this a little while. This is retailing in the UK around £45 now. You can pick it up in most supermarkets. I mean, Glenfiddich is one of the most, it's probably the best known distillery out there. Uh, you go, all the shops, even my little shop over the road has the 12 year old in there. You go in most shops, you can always find Glenfiddich in there. It's very well known. And they obviously thought they were onto something with this because they have mass produced it. I mean, just the bottle itself looks, you know, the bottle looks nice. Dark bottle, 43%. Uh, William Grant and Sons Limited it hasn't got much on the bottle. It's got more of the story on here. Now let me just read this to you. It says, uh, when the malt master Brian Kinsman were an entrepreneurial space side craft brewer, they hit it off and immediately, and it didn't take long for a genius idea to form, experimental and untraditional. Brian suggested creating a Glenfiddich whiskey finished in IPA craft beer casks something that had never been done in the industry before. What starts as a quirky idea has turned into an intensive experiment. Now, like I say, they, uh, they obviously worked together, created this, uh, this lovely, lovely drop. First experimental series, it had obviously been planned a while. Like I say, they knew if they hit it on the market, it would sell. I mean, you have a lot of people out there who like craft, uh, craft beers, a lot of people who like whiskey, mixing the two together, no brainer. And obviously with Glenfiddich doing it, with the name Glenfiddich, it will sell. And it did sell, and it is still selling. Um, so yeah, let's have a look and see what it's like. Lovely golden taste. Lovely golden colour. I mean, three months in the cask. It's. I'm not going to sit there and say to you that it's. Uh, it's taken on the cask. You know, there is probably a bit of colouring in there, just to give it a little hint. But you know, does it hang on the glass? A little bit. Not a lot. I say it looks nice. Slightly dark coloration. Ambery is what I would call it. Extremely fruity on the nose. I mean, super fruity. I would say pears, apples, and tangerines. Strangely enough, I'm picking up tangerines or satsumas, like a really zingy, citrusy type of smell coming from here. 
you get hints of the hops. Not a lot though. There's a really sharp citrusy smell that takes over in that from everything. That is beautiful. That is so delicious. It really is. I mean, florally, fruity, citrusy, zesty. Those words spring to mind. Clean is another word I'd use. Hmm, very nice. I'll say 43%. I mean, I obviously watered it down as cask strength with this. Would it sell? I doubt it very much. But 43%, it's above the 40%. Probably chill filtered, even though it's come out of an IPA cask. You know, it's probably taken some of the taste away as well, to be honest with you. Uh, it's hanging on the sides a little bit. Nothing superb. But yeah, let's get into it and let's see what it tastes like. Citrus is so good. Very fruity, very citrusy. Beautiful, beautiful taste. To start off with, you can really taste the floral notes. You can taste still tangerines, lemon, tangerines, oranges. It's what I can taste washing over the tongue. It's not until a couple of seconds after it's washed across, you get an earthy, deep, hoppy taste that comes as well. That is lovely. That's that initial fruitiness. Very, very crisp. Thin though. It's not a long finish. It is fairly thin across the tongue. No oiliness. It's that initial crispy, sharp flavours of the citrus that wash across. You have the dark, deep flavours of the hops come through afterwards. They just dance around for a little while and then it fades away. Fades away to nothing. But it's sold and it keeps selling. So it is obviously something that the consumer wanted. It's obviously a market they've tapped into and it's worked. And it is obviously something that I believe they will keep producing for a little while. They will probably stop it once they try something else. I mean, with how well this experimental series uh, worked, I would say that they will now be looking into new innovative ideas to yet again push the boundaries of what can be released. That is still fruity. The initial sip you get the fruit and then like I say the hops do come through you can definitely taste them slightly there in the background it's not a taste of beer which takes over don't expect to buy this and get a half beer half whiskey taste it's just a taste within the finish once the initial sharp flavors have gone you can just feel that dark taste the earthy, hoppy, natural taste come through slightly. Yeah, it's good. It is good. I mean, for £45, I would prefer, if I was you, look for when it comes out on sale. Um, that's a lot of money to spend on this, I'd say. Is it worth that? No. It is just because it is the Glenfiddich Experimental Series. You want to obviously build the whole series together. You want to have the bottles in your collection, if you collect whiskey, uh, like I do, you will pay it. I mean, taste, yes, it is good. Is it suitable for a newcomer to whiskey? Maybe not. It's definitely one for people who like their uh, space sides, uh, likes to try something different. But all in all, it's good. I mean, 
marks out of 10, I would give this a 6.7. Uh, it's not bad, it's above average, but it's not pushing anywhere near a 7.5, an 8 or a 9. It's just above average, that is all you can use to describe it, but you know, it's okay. It's good. Definitely one that you can relax with though. Sit down, relax in front of the TV and chill out. Will will I get another bottle once this has been once this has been drunk? Maybe. Will I get it and keep it and then open it up and drink it? Maybe it will be one that just sits there to be in with the collection. So I have all four ones at the minute, but I suppose whiskey's, you know, you buy it to drink it, but then it's also, I'm the sort of person that if there's a collection come out, I do like to have each member of the family, so to speak. So we will see, but anyway, that was Risky Review number 10 of the Glenfiddich IPA. Not a bad dram, half decent whiskey. Part of the Glenfiddich uh, family, so it is going to be well known, but that's the end of the review. Thank you very much for watching, cheers, and I will see you in the next one.